Okay, so we have the Astro Scan, Focuser, Finder Scope is all fixed up. We have the Celestron, but really any of the 102 F5 short tube refractors are all the same. So let's see what's going on. What would be better? Now we're gonna be testing it on the moon is up there, Saturn. Anyway, so one caveat though, we are not testing this on like a dark country sky, like my Bortle 2 skies, which is kind of what these are made for, right? Low power, wide field viewing. Unfortunately, we are done there for the year. So even though these are low power telescopes, it's gonna be, this test is gonna be on the moon and Saturn. And I wanna see what I like more. And maybe if you guys would like to also see this test, get some feedback. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna have these guys by next year, for another five and a half months type of thing. I, I doubt it, but you never know. If I do, I'll do the test in the country's guys, but I don't think I might have these guys that long. Okay, so on the Astro Scan, we have a 24.5 giving us 18 power. And then on the 4 inch refractor, we have a 32 millimeter getting us about 16, 17 power. Okay, so let's take a look at the moon first. Okay, there we go, I already got it. Okay, so I had to change the diagonal because I actually saw three moons. So it's kind of like something was wrong with that one. Okay, so now I just changed it and it definitely is better. You can only see one moon, which is what we want. So right away at this power, you can see chromatic aberration on the rim. To me, it's like yellow. However, it is pretty crisp and clear. So let's take a look at this one. This one does not work because I don't have enough in focus. So we're gonna have to try another power that's comparable. Okay, so now on this one, we're gonna do a 6.7 ultra wide angle, which gets me 66 power. It's not so high. And then in the refractor, we're gonna use an eight millimeter, which gets us 63 power. So three power difference. Okay, the moon is right there. Using this focuser is much better than the pull push focuser it comes with. There is no chromatic aberration in this one, that's for sure. But it doesn't feel so 100% sharp. It's decent, but not great. Okay, this one is definitely sharper, but it still has that chromatic aberration. I see yellow fringing. Okay, so let's go up to higher power. So in this refractor here, with a 6.7 and a two times Bartle, gets me 125 power. Normally you don't need this much power on the moon unless you want to look at some, you know, really close craters or mountain ranges or anything like that. Okay, again, it's mostly clear. Most people would probably like it, especially new people. Again, but that purple fringing, now it looks more purplish to me. On the side that's full, is really strong. But overall, where the craters are, on the Terminator, where the shade and light meet, it's not bad. New people probably would find that acceptable. They probably wouldn't know what chromatic aberration is anyway. So, same thing. If we use a 6.7 and a 2 times Barlow, we're getting 132 power. So a little bit more power. I think within the acceptable range. Okay, so it doesn't quite focus with a Barlow and this side piece. So I'm just putting the barrel of the Barlow inside. And okay, now it does focus. But this is getting us a one and a half times power, not two times power. You know what guys, you can see some mountain ranges and some craters 
and stuff like that, but it, it doesn't really, it's not really clear. Uh, let me just see something. Okay guys, so I have to go off camera because I checked collimation and it was off on this guy. So I had to go inside and change the corrector plate and the secondary mirror to be better aligned. And now it looks pretty much perfect. I didn't laser it, but eyeballing it on the donut looks good now. I'm, I don't know if it's perfect, but much better. The moon definitely looks much better than what we did before. Wow, much closer to that guy now. Much closer, but still not tack sharp, okay? We're gonna do it to the same power now. Let me put the barrel inside the eyepiece. It's gonna be one and a half times, but let's see what we get. Not bad at all, okay. I was actually pretty disappointed with the views before I fixed the corrector plate and the secondary mirror, but that looks actually pretty good. Not as good as that one, but fairly close. So I say it's pretty close, but this one still is better. But at least I got the astral scan much closer. Much closer. On the 4 inch refractor. Okay, so let's put a 6.7 in here. It has chromatic aberration again. Saturn kind of looks a little yellowish. Okay, let's put a bar to it. So at least we get to about 100 power. Okay, it's not a bad little Saturn. I mean, if some of you guys are viewing and you like wide telescopes or wide field telescopes, you might like that for a wide telescope is okay. Now let's go to Saturn on this guy. There it is, just on the edge. Okay, let's pump up the power. Okay, Saturn's still there. Again, we're going to about 100 power. Okay, you can see Saturn and its ring. And it looks pretty good. It has a little bit of flaring on the top, but um, I think I'm ready for the conclusion of this guy. So I would say now that I have this guy fully functioning, now maybe collimation was a hair better, but the problem is there is no collimation or adjustments on the primary or the secondary. The only thing you could do is tilt the, the corrector plate, like a little left and right. Or, that's about it. There's really no other adjustment. So it's not bad. It's pretty good, but it's not as good as this guy here. If you guys have the nostalgic of owning this guy, and you can find it, you know, pretty cheap, it will serve you for wide field viewing as well as some planetary viewing. Now remember, both of these guys are wide field, low power. So don't expect amazing planetary views or even high, high power of the, the moon or anything like that. I mean, this one does it a little bit better than this one, but you know, this one is probably, you know, I'm not sure how old it is exactly, but it is probably much older than this one. Being that there's a few problems with, um, you know, can never get the adjustment right after it's made. You know, it's it's not the worst thing, but it's, it's not the best thing either. So if you want to try one of these, it's okay. I found it better to use this focus instead of the original, unless yours that you get, the focus is working perfect. I guess that's it for these two. So I would say between these two, this one does a little bit better, but it's not a humongous or a, even a medium difference. It's a little bit better now that this one's fine-tuned. Um, it just depends on what you like. Now, I would say in deep sky objects, like if you're looking at galaxies and clusters, planets usually you want to, is where you want to see the fine detail. When you see a galaxy, it's a little fuzzy, gray thing. I don't think you're going to see a millimeter or two less fuzzy. It's, it's probably the same. But if you want one that does a little bit of both, uh, I would say go for that one. This one's okay-ish if you find it cheap enough. Anyway, that's it. Joe Jaguar, like, comment, and subscribe. See you on the next video. If you know anybody getting in the hobby or maybe anyone in the 
forums and asked about something like this, share my channel with them. I do have members videos where once a month I post a video just for the members. It does not go public. It's only 99 cents. Why don't you join? Why not you? Why not me?